Well, a very good morning to you. How are you doing? And welcome to Inspiration Monday on Life and Style. This is Motivate, and we are at the beautiful Ola Sereni Hotel, and we're here to talk to Harriet. Now, Harriet, interesting character. She, she, she turned 50. <laughs> she turned 50 and decided, you know what? I feel like I need to have my own magazine about fashion and lifestyle. So it's called Ferb L Style. And she's a lady on the cover. I don't know what she was doing for the last 50 years of our life, but we are about to find out. But I bet it's a very, very interesting story. Welcome to the show, Harriet. Thank you very much. So, and firstly, I'd like to say how gorgeous you look, and I adore those nails. Absolutely thank fab. You. <laughs> Absolutely fab. <laughs> yeah. Are you a model, Harriet? Have you been a model ever? I'm a self model. You're a self model? I'm a self model. What is that? What but is when that? you talk about modeling, going on the catwalk yes. or things like that. I did a bit of that mm -hmm. in my younger age, especially when I was at Evelyn's College of Designing. Okay. I was like the in-house model. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, when I went for further studies in the UK at mm -hmm. school, you know, I did fashion and uh, um, fashion designing and fashion merchandising. So again, we had to do our own productions and everything. And again, I was the model there. But uh, being that I was already married, I was encouraged to pursue modeling in the UK, but I really couldn't because I was kind of divided between my hubby and he was already in Zambia and I was in the UK. So every break I had, I had to run back home. <laughs> And I don't know if that was good or bad, but yeah. It was good. At least you lived that bit of your life. So yes. modeling for this magazine came naturally for you, for your magazine. It did in yeah. different ways because when you set out and you're doing something like that, to actually not be behind. And when you come from fashion designing, you know, you're behind. Yeah. So it was something for me, I really had to encourage myself to be out there. It's, it's a long story, it's a really big story how this whole thing has unfolded. So at the same time to have the courage to say, it's my magazine and I'm gonna be on the cover, oh. yeah? But it wasn't like that, but it ended up being like that. That's and being beautiful. that also in the place where I live in Austria, Fab L style, is about fashion and lifestyle around the world, as I call myself a child of the world. But at the same time, as much as we're an emerging, concentrating on the emerging markets, yeah. Africa is my main focus when it comes to this. Beautiful. Let's go back. Let's go. Harriet from Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> That little girl from Uganda. That little girl, yeah. What, was, what were her dreams back then? How was it growing up in Uganda back then? And did you ever think you'd be this person that you are right now? I was always ambitious. I always had this dream that one day I'm going to do something really great in this world. And as always my playing and my everything, I had this feeling that whatever I will do in life, I'll be great because it has to be great. Wow. Because I like doing things with the greatness and this doesn't matter if it's behind the scenes yeah. from the scene i'm a little shy but uh behind the scenes i wanted to be that power lawyer you know i stand in court oh. and silence drops and uh, <laughs> i present my case um guilty not guilty as long as i'm handling the case you are in good hands <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to be a lawyer i wanted to do law to be a lawyer yeah. mm -hmm. what happened to that did you ever go to school for that at ah, all? As uh, one gets older and goes higher, the books get bigger and thicker. <laughs> so, 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 so true. Really, and also being that I was always so interested in fashion and lifestyle. So it's actually amazing studying fashion and ending up doing fashion and lifestyle because life for me has always fascinated me. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So 50 years. What have you been after? You did not get into law school? I did not get into <laughs> You got into fashion school, but yeah. how has the journey been for you? What have you been after? What are those little things that you've been doing on the side? My life, my life. One thing I can say that I got... Oh, something uh, I had to mention. Sorry to yeah. cut you short. Harriet looks amazing. She's the mother of four. Thank you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. you can yeah, four gorgeous children. I'm yeah. really grateful. Um, sometimes when I see all this, I believe the journey was already laid out for me. Okay. <clears throat> and in life, 
there's some people who are very blessed. They know exactly what they want to do and they just go do that. Yeah. And uh, with my life, when I started fashion, I really believed I'm going to be a top designer and I'm going to do really just, and I did that after college. And I started my own label and it just took off, uh, which was quite frightening because it was too fast. I don't know all the, you know, the other sides of it, but I did it. Now being- Was that in the UK or Uganda? That was in Zambia. That was in Zambia. I tell of the world. you, it's such a, a long of the world. story. Please yeah. bring it, bring it. And mm -hmm. um, uh, my husband moved from Kenya at that time to Zambia. I completed Evelyn's college. I joined him after about eight months. I went to the UK to study. So we were doing the up and down uh, thing. And then later on, I settled with him in Zambia. And then I wondered now what next? You know, it's very nice. The first week is always fantastic yes, you know, because you think you need sleep. <laughs> And uh, through that one day, we just it just started really simply looking at fabrics, admiring, and then slowly talking to people. And not so long later, I got a tailor from Congo. I got him over to Zambia, who I was the <laughs> guinea pig. You know, everything was measured on me. Yeah. And uh, one day, I had like about of a hundred pieces and you know I'm so excited which was good for my husband because it's like every day I made another outfit and then one day he said to me what are you gonna do with them and I said I don't know I mean I couldn't even think and he said why don't you hold the fashion show you know there is this event coming up and, and I thought really how that sounds great so I said I will organize it obviously I look for models every you single oh yeah <laughs> and I did the whole training and this is the bit of fashion merchandising which I started how to organize a fashion show how to source whatever you need uh, the music and all that and we put up a show and it turned out to be extremely successful because I sold everything that night I didn't even have prices on but luck enough I had a friend who had a boutique who was visiting she said to me Harriet I will stand handle. on the side I will handle it oh my god and um, at a certain time it was getting really late and asked uh, one of the hotels is it possible to give her a room tomorrow so that people could come there and surely people came there and then she just gave me you know Zambian kwacha she just gave me this big basket of money <laughs> and I was like Wow, okay. this is like in the movies. So when I went home, I put it on the bed and I was sitting there. I was going like, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, and then that journey of mine started in Zambia, continued making fashion. The Zambian people recognized my talent. Uh, at a certain time, it was an interview like this. The next time they asked me to dress the uh, broadcasters, you remember the times we had the news at seven, at yes. eight, at nine, and the big news at 10 o'clock. Yeah. What went around, people started finding out how can they get in touch with me. And, 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 and it just started growing. And then I was invited to Lusaka, got involved in fashion shows. And a couple of years later, um, I was asked to participate in a competition of 12 designers mm -hmm. and uh, whoever who will win will be chosen to design the dress for the Miss Zambia, for the Miss World. Wow. And whew, somehow I had even, you know, doing my own things, I was the only not Zambian, <laughs> you know, and they called uh, afterwards Harriet Hala and I was wondering who is that? <laughs> <laughs> who know? is that? Who is that? Okay. And they called again Harriet Hala, you know, a few times and then I thought, sounds familiar so anyway i got to get my baby award uh, for being the top designer in uh, in zambia and uh, all the congratulations and the, my dress was won by miss zambia i think it was 94 if i'm not wrong wow. in south africa but at the same time i got to go into zimbabwe I was also given an opportunity by a friend we met here so many years okay. and they lived in, uh, in Harare yeah. and there were these fashion shows which were held every Thursday at the Monomapata and uh, she said I will get you into that so that you come and show. I did go there and uh, you know those are the days when a model passed by everybody clapped you know and everything I'm in the back and there's really great clapping until it was over for the finale and they called out the designer and this huge room of i don't know 200 women or 300 wow. men it just went silent and i came and i bowed 
and the lady who actually invited me stood up and clapped and then after a while everybody started <laughs> you know uh clapping and everything and when i went back again i sold the whole collection wow. but it was uh, it was uh, i think still um a shock for them because it was the um uh, first indigenous african can i say that because i don't know how i would say it <laughs> in this society okay. in Zimbabwe to yeah. to showcase okay. yeah beautiful <laughs> and uh, and then through that uh, friends I went to South Africa and just when we were just get I was just getting into South Africa then my husband's uh, contract finished in Zambia and then we were moved to uh, Egypt so what happens to you now you have to move now I have to move I have to leave everything so um, did you have your children by then no we didn't have kids okay yet. so it we was okay to kids, move around yes it was okay and uh um moved to egypt stayed in cairo for a couple of months my husband was uh, opening a hotel in shamashek it's a resort and then afterwards moved to shamashek and uh you could swim so many times in the sea <laughs> and uh, admire the beautiful stars which is really beautiful and then time comes where the urge starts again. again yeah and uh talking to people and then i was just finding myself and then we had this idea why don't we open up a benetton you know in Egypt, in uh, Shamoshek. And we really start because when I get onto something, I go for it. Yeah. yeah. It's better you find out that it doesn't work by doing pursuing it, it yeah. than sitting back and saying, yeah, that would be great, but we don't have the money, but we don't have this, you know. And then again, we had to move. Then we moved to um, Belgrade, <laughs> Yugoslavia. Oh my God, wow. <laughs> And um, Yugoslavia, in the beginning, my husband went because he really wanted to get acquainted. These are totally different cultures, you know. It is. So it you really have to go is. learn and know. Or were you bringing your African, authentic, your fabrics that you started with in Zambia? Were you going with them there? Or did you go learn what they would like, what they use? And I just... think whatever one does, and I'm really grateful for that, because it's not something that I sat down and thought about. Yeah. But I think my culture has got a great part in my life it plays for me to live and settle anywhere and I really I can settle anywhere it's just that maybe time comes where I say like for example when I was in Egypt I miss green I miss green I miss trees uh, yeah. I miss forests yeah. you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but I can live and I think it's got something to do with it because really I have not been anywhere where I have suffered in the sense of what I hear people talk about yeah. that they feel discluded or they feel this and they feel that. Because I remember as growing up, we grow up or I grew up so many, I grew up so many different tribes. Yeah. And I remember in Uganda, and I'm sure you do it here, mm -hmm. yeah? You can say to your neighbor, even if they're far away, you can say something in their language, yeah? yeah. You can greet them in their language yes. or you, you can say thank you in their language. Yeah. And this is for me the first thing I learn everywhere I go. When I was a child, I was one of those kids who spoke so many different languages. People didn't know what my tribe was. <laughs> Just like being here, people yeah. think I'm a lure or... Yeah. Uh, and I say, yeah, we look alike, yeah? So um, I haven't felt this clutter, and I really never sticked to the international community or expatriate life. Yeah. I always went over, but this is also since I was a child, I played with kids and I did things which I think people in my age did not do. Yeah. <laughs> and all that so that has never been uh, anything i settle in i um and uh it could some places it took a long time for the people to maybe accept me or or they just look at this here yeah? yeah but after a while like for example being in uh you know like being in egypt me going to the market and uh i i, I walk by myself and everything where are you from where are you from and then i say i'm from uganda oh you're our sister or meeting other people where you're from and they say i'm uganda and they say oh i've never been to africa <laughs> okay <laughs> you know so i remind them about the nile you know yeah. <laughs> yes it hasn't crossed an ocean but you know you know these uh, kind of things i uh, it, it just comes naturally and uh living in uh because like when i'm in chamashe people think i'm an american or i'm british or i'm french yeah because, because the english it, is really good no because they would not imagine 
Really? And this is where we are going to go with Fab oh, L style no. at the end of the day. Because okay. Yeah. Okay. I get you. <laughs> totally get and you. And if you're from Africa, are yeah. you a president's child or yes. are you with all the chief's daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I totally get what you mean. So there's that. Yeah, there, there is, is that. that. End. And it still happens up to now. You will not believe it. And for example, if, you know, I'm coming back and they, when we were moving back to Kenya, you know, from Poland, and they're like, so you're taking your kids there. Where are they going to stay? And, and, and if you want to go somewhere, and I said, yeah, there is transport, you know. And so is there a cage where you will wait for the transport? And, you know, it came at a certain time. Actually, it became a little, I just said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> at this time, in the 21st century, I you know. know. And, uh, they, but the how children are used to living in houses. So how is it going to happen there? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're my kids. <laughs> they'll, they'll be manage. fine. They'll be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Yeah, so you, you still face these kind of things, but for me to be honest with you, I feel we should forgive. Okay. Because it's the knowledge that at the end of the day. True. If you bring somebody here, they will not have that issue. But if you take them to the deepest of village, people will will, will look. And for me, I always say, by somebody looking at me and extra looking at me being pitch black, you know, they're just amazed, yeah? You know, they're just amazed, just like someone deep down in the village would be just so amazed yeah, about them. The only true. thing is for us, it doesn't happen in the city. Yeah. And they don't know. And when you live in places like Hungary, Poland, even certain parts of Germany and so many other places, they don't show people this. No. They don't show people this. No. Yeah? They bring them documentaries of, um, how do you call that when their children have got a big tummy, torn yeah. shirt, a big, you know. They yeah. show so much poverty. I'm not saying it's not there. But then but again, that's really, not the image. That's the, the, this, that is not the image that's at all. That's not the image. <clears throat> yeah? And people are making a living from that. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So, Fabel style, it will take us a long way. But How did we come about this? Before we even get to, you know, what it is meant to do, mm. um, you traveled the world. You did your, traveled, yeah. <laughs> traveled the world and did all of that, and you got your children along the way. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did we get to this point? I, I mean, think, 50. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't think about it at all, actually, no? until, you know, when we were talking with the panel and everything, and um, I'm a little bit under pressure, um, around especially where i come from what is the age group you know what is ah, the target yes. and i'm really having an issue putting a certain edge on it yeah i think vogue it's all very nice but there are certain 30s who are not interested in that and um there is a certain 50 who are interested in it and there is a certain 70 who is not interested in it and for me fab it, it starts off like this but fab i would like fab to go in the way that it's for everybody yeah and what is behind fab is promoting talent so i'm not going to say that i'm promoting talent of 18 year olds or no. millenniums there are people who have got talent and they're 80 and moment never came for them to shine absolutely yeah so how can i eliminate them and fab fab means fabulous feel good you are fabulous we are so fabulous from your heart from your inside from what you bring out you are fabulous and there is somebody greater who is fabulous who i know who is absolutely awesome yeah yeah and this is what fab is all about great you are driven i don't know what there's there's always something that keeps you going each and every day and when you move from one place to another mm -hmm. you'll find something that works for you you know for everyone who's watching this show probably you could tell them what is that thing for you what are those philosophies mantras that push you to find your space in every other place that you go hmm Open mindset. You have to be open to things. Okay. You, I'm open. I didn't know. I, as a child, sometimes, even recently, I, sometimes I don't know if it's good or not. Yeah. It's I like sometimes it's I go somewhere and uh, I chat and I, and, I, and I go home and I thought, 
maybe I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't have stayed another one hour or something like that. But then at the same time, actually, I learned something in that one extra hour. Maybe yeah. I sacrificed something, but I learned something. Yeah. And if it's something which is, you know, I learn from that. And hopefully, <laughs> I don't repeat it, but you know how life is. Um, I think apart from mindset is to love our world. Our world has got so much to offer. Absolutely. Um, there is so much good in one of us, in each one of us. You know, if we look away from this, from this. and when you speak that we look at what is in there yeah. or it's wrong or good, we can argue about it or sometimes we can even just go and think about it and say, you know what, she was right, I was wrong. And there is nothing wrong by saying sorry because you totally free yourself. You totally free yourself. See good in everything. Beautiful. No matter how tiny it is or how big it was. And see good. Just, just see good. When I, when I, when I, when I was in Poland, I just, I just saw good and I was so grateful for God to give me this opportunity to live there. And you know what? Good followed me. Yeah. Uh, in Hungary and good followed me. I cannot tell you that the six years I lived there, everything was hokey dory. But if I look back, I don't even see what wasn't at the end of the day. Yeah. You saw good. I saw good. Just yeah. see good. And it's not easy sometimes. And sometimes one forgets. But there is beauty and everything. And if you, you open your heart to do so and love, just love, just love. And if others just don't appreciate your love, mm. cry a bit, pick up and stand up again. Don't stop loving. Goodness, I love that. Yeah. And I think that's where we get to end this conversation. But yeah. maybe you can tell us how people can get this magazine. Is it online? Are there shops for it? How much is it going for? Um, the magazine is online. I plan not to sell Fabian style magazine. Whoa. And I pray that that would be the that it will be able to sustain itself through sponsor, uh, sponsorships and uh, uh, advertisement. For what I see is to give everybody an opportunity to get hold of Fab and Style for their dreams, if they have dreams to grow, if uh, their dreams are fulfilled, to say, wow, I'm so grateful to see something like that, I did the right thing. Oh my God. Yeah. So how can people get it? What's the website? For now, uh, the website is uh, www.fablstyle.com. Our Instagram is fablstyle. My Instagram is fab.harriet. And uh, for the actual copy of the magazine, at the moment you can in Nairobi you could only find them at uh, Ole Sereni. We've been so blessed that you know we could have them here. But please go online, download like us love us because we will like you and love you back <laughs> let's bring our continent let's promote talent let's let's show people those who don't know there are people who know that we do have talent yeah but there's still yet a huge number out there who doesn't know that actually that is done by us because it's standing under somebody's name yeah. out there uh, question so for all the people out there who would like to be featured in the mm. magazine they could also write to you? They could write for us. Okay. To, uh, the they could write to us. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go on our website, the email is there. I'm still looking for content providers Perfect. for the whole continent in, in beauty, in arts and craft, in art, in music, anything which is an everyday thing. Great. Yeah? Because in order for me to bring this here, because when I'm bringing he this here, I'm not only bringing it for Africa, no. I'm also carrying it for Austria and for Europe to bring this back and then when I get here I also take back and share absolutely yeah and this will make will help for me so many people even my own best friends who have got successful businesses they've traveled all over the world they still cannot believe that there is more to us wow. than this is it I don't want to be the one who is doing that, but we can do it together. Yes. My idea is through fashion and lifestyle, because fashion is my background, to voice out and to build a stage for talent. Goodness, Harriet, thank yeah. you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. Time is not on our side. We have to end the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Great. You know what? Harriet is giving you a chance 
to play a big role in enlightening the world about the things that we have here. And all you have to do is go to www.ferblstyle.com, right? Yes. Share whatever it is, see what they have, like, love them. And my takeaway is see good, do good. See good and good will follow you. So go smile out there and see some good. <laughs> see some good and do some good. This has been Motivate with me, Mikali and Harriet. And uh, we're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, we've got Catherine Mwangi on Books and Blogs. I keep saying that uh, you don't borrow just because you qualify, because there's a willing lender. You need to borrow because you need to. All right? And so that is when things began to go wrong. We started borrowing for consumption.